Hello students. Welcome to today's class. Today we are going to discuss vector and tensor matrix. Okay. First of all, let's see uh, the vectors part. So, so uh, to understand vectors and tensors, first we we'll go to some of the notations followed in the group. So, if I have a S and it is normal font, okay, no bold. So that means it is scalar. So light weight italic. It means it's scalar. And V, if it is a bold shape, if it's bold, then it is called vector. And if you have tau and it's been bold, then it is called second order tensor. Okay. This is just notation. We will come to details in a later stage. Okay. Suppose we have a variable x and it is wrapped in parentheses. That means it is a scalar. If you have a variable and it is wrapped in the square bracket, that means it is a vector. If I have a variable, uh, let's say some y and it is wrapped in curly braces, then it is called second order tensor or tensor. Tensors are always second order. So you can say second order tensor or you can say simply tensor. Okay. Now, uh, let's say you want to find out, let's say this is a vector, dot product of two vectors. Okay. What will be the order of the output of the dot product of these two vectors? Definitely you know it is a scalar, right? How? So, we know it. But, if you want to say quickly that it is dot product will be the scalar quantity, then there is an easy way to do it. So, so first thing first, what is the order of a scalar? Order of scalar is 0, the order of a vector is 1, and order of a tensor is 2. Okay, always keep in mind this value. Okay. Now, what will be the output of this dot product of the vector? Definitely this is a scalar. So how will you know that? So what is the order of vector one? What is the order of vector one? And if you see this single dot product, that means you have to subtract minus two, okay? So minus two. Single dot product means minus two. Now from all these values, it will give you zero. What is the order of a scalar? Zero. Okay. So this dot product will give you zero. So, single dot product means minus 2. If you see same across the cross product, then you have to subtract 1. If you come across the double product, double dot product, then you have to subtract minus 2, that is minus 2 into 2. Okay? And if you don't have any uh, symbol in between these vectors or tensors, then you don't have to subtract anything. Okay? So solve examples. Okay, you already know commutative law. Okay, if you have two scalars, the R is a normal shape, right? Italic, so it is a scalar scalar. So R into S is SR. This is basically commutative law. All are scalar. Q R S. Uh, you are multiplying first Q R, and uh, this is also give you the same result. So this is also called as Associative law, you already know that. Similarly, you know distributive law. This. Okay, this, this are for uh, scalars, means numbers. Something. Okay, for example, let's say I have 1 into 1 plus 1 plus 1. What is the value? So, first plus inside, so that is 1 into 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. So, there or to this case. Also, you can do the same thing as this formula that is 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 that is 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 
three. Right? So this is the distributive law for scalars, only numbers. Okay. We are not dealing with vectors now. Okay. So you already know a vector. So a vector can be defined as a it has magnitude and direction, right? So you simply define the magnitude like this modulus of vector. Definitely this is a vector. So while writing you cannot make a bold write bold B on paper, right? So uh, make sure you write this like this. This means a vector. If you don't add any arrow over it, that means this is a scalar. Or you can write simply like this in parentheses. And if you want to say that this is a vector, then just write in square bracket. So you can follow any of these two conventions. Okay, what about if you want to write a tensor? So just put double arrow, double dash over the variable. So this means it is a tensor. Or you can write under curly braces to say that this is a tensor. Okay. You already know addition and subtraction of vectors. So you you have let's say you want to find the sum of uh, vector v plus w. So basically, first you draw the vector direction. Then again you draw the vector w. Now shift this w vector parallelly. You know the parallel vectors are almost same, same direction and same energy. So it won't affect much. So this is your w. Now you can draw from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. That will give you the triangular law of addition. That is your v plus w. So this is the direction of the uh, addition of these two vectors. Okay. Similarly, if you want to do subtraction, so first draw the first vector. Then you have this w right in this direction. So make it opposite. You can draw exactly opposite direction because this opposite will give you minus the blue. Now you just join the head and tail of this. So you will get v minus the blue. This is another way of doing this. Okay. You already know this stuff. So you know vector additions are commutative. You know this associative as well. Okay. Now what happens if you multiply a vector by a scalar? So in this case we have scalar. Right? So S B you can is equal to V F. That means if you multiply a vector by scalar, then this is commutative operation. Okay. Similarly, multiplication of a vector by scalar is a associative operation. And it is also distributive. Okay. So here V is vector, Q R S are all are scalars or numbers. Okay, now you know dot product, right? Dot product, or it is also called scalar product. So V dot W, these two are vectors. So it will be V W cos V W, the angle between these two vectors. That is also you can say cos theta. So the product will be V W and cos theta. See, the output is scalar. Okay. So dot product is always be a scalar value. What is what? You multiply the vector with itself, then it will go give you v square. Okay? So this is again scalar. So dot products are always commutative, but it is not associative. Okay? Not associative. However, it is distributive. So u dot v, u dot v first, then u plus some here, then u dot w. So it is distributive. So what about the cross product? Okay. Or you, it is also called vector product. Okay, so V cross W, then you have VW, magnitude of its vector, 
and sine theta the theta angle between this v and the glue and we have a unit vector unit vector perpendicular perpendicular to both the v and the glue okay so basically cross product will give you a vector let's see so what is the order of the vector v one cross means minus one and w is a vector so order one if you sum all these two you will get one so the output will be of order one that means it's a vector the cross product always gives you a vector what about if you do cross product of a vector with itself so it will give you zero right because uh, it is not possible so cross products are not commutative that means v cross w is not equal to w cross v however v cross w is equal to minus of w cross v that means the direction will be opposite magnitude will be same but the direction will be opposite so they are not commutative but you can use this equation similarly this is not associative All right, is distributed. Okay, multiple products of vectors. So what happens? We have multiple products of vectors. So in the here you can see we have two scalars and a vector. So R S. You already know that these two are commutative. So and this is a single vector. It doesn't matter. So again, we dot product of V and W, and we are multiplying by scalar. Again. You are multiplying scalar with the cross product, so you can easily evaluate these values. You can solve some of these examples at home. So if you have any problem, you can ask me later. So now we will do vector operation in terms of the components. Okay, components in the sense to what is this vector? You know, v. You can write it from v x. I K F plus V component of vector V in y direction, then component of V in z direction. Okay. But let's uh, do it in a systematic way. Uh, uh, we define some notation symbols so that we can follow in the whole book. Okay. So let's define this. This is not delta. I mean, this is delta, but it is special delta called Kronecker delta. Okay, don't uh, rhyme it as D. It is not D. It is delta, but it is special delta, Kronecker delta. Okay, and this one generally it is epsilon, but in this case we will say it permutation symbol epsilon i k k. Okay. Uh, What it means, we'll see. So, suppose we write conical delta I K, okay, and this the value will be one or zero, depending upon the uh, the equality of this I and J. Suppose I is equal to J, that means it is one plus one. And but if it is not equal to the uh, equal, then it will be zero. So just remember this for now. We will we'll discuss in uh, problems later. And this permutation symbol E I J K. Right? E I J K will be plus one if all are in the same order one two three or two two one. Right? I J K J K I or K I J like that. Okay, but it is negative one if any one is not in the order or in the reverse order. So three to one, it is in the opposite direction. Three to one, one three two, right? Two one two, so it will be minus one. And if any of the i or j or k are equal, for let's say one one two, epsilon one one two, so this Any i j are as well, so it will be with a become zero. For example, if I have one to one here, i is equal to k. 
it will also give you zero. Okay. So this you can prove it. You can also prove this. You can you can derive it actually. Okay. Also you can use a uh, permutation number in uh, calculating the determinant. So first row one, so a one two, a one one. First row one, second column two, so a one two like that. So you can write in a you know, compact manner in this one. If you put, uh, so let's say I will put i equal to one. Then we put j equal to one. Then q is equal to one. Then we will get just put the values of q is equal to one in every case. Then put q is equal to two. Okay, sum it up. Then we can get the uh, unit vector. We already know unit vectors. Uh, let me use a study like this. Unit vector in x direction. Okay, and we have two here. Unit vector in the y direction. So basically, this have uh, unit vectors means you have unit magnitude and uh, some direction. Okay? So you know dot product of two unit vectors, that is i i cap dot i cap is always one. Okay? So j dot cap j cap dot j cap is equal to one. So right, we already know this. So I can also write it like this. If you see k into g delta one dot delta one, that means it is delta one to delta one. This is definitely g is one. This means you are having a dot product between uh, first unit vector and the first unit vector. Similarly, you know the cross product of i plus i cap is zero. J cap plus J cap is zero. J cap plus J cap is zero. So there is no reason. Okay. All right. So here we have I cos one means I cos in X direction, two means in Y direction. So I can say delta one cos delta two. That is easy to get to. So we we in the one uh, in the same order one two. Okay. So we do so. so Similarly, two into two. It will be one in the same order, so it is equal to sign. However, if you see this, it is a J cross I cap, which is an opposite direction. So you will get, you will get a minus, so reverse order, and you will get, you will get a K cap, that is better, okay? and so on. So if you see in a diagram, so you have unit vector in one direction, that is X. This is y, this is y. Delta 2 means we can put this up. Delta 2 means we can put this up. So this is unit vector in this direction. So if you see in a curve uh, like this, uh, you can uh, replace it by chronicle delta i2. Okay. If this is i is equal to 0, you can just replace as 1. Okay. These are not equal in the actual place here. So, similarly, if you can look at the okay, you can replace like the connection from 1 to 3, uh, communication symbol I2 here, like that. Suppose I1 and this is J2. That means what? E, so it means 1, 2, 3, right? The same number. So that will give you plus 1. And we get a unit vector in two directions. Okay. So this makes sense. So you can expand in terms of its components. So we have a vector v. So v1 is the first component, and in any direction delta 1, that is x direction. The purpose of uh, denoting the unit direction in this form is that. If you use other coordinate systems, like spherical coordinate system or similar, so this will change the coordinate. So if you use rectangular coordinate system, delta 1 means uh, you have i cap. So if you use cylindrical coordinate system, that is your um, radial diagonal, i cap. 
he is still the golden retriever in the game. However, uh, let's do the other three. That is your key cap in wrestling like ordinance. It is your um, dad in wrestling like ordinance. And that is your five in wrestling like ordinance. So we'll discuss you. Uh, this is the list. Okay, how you calculate the magnitude of a vector by drawing this model of the data? So we square root of first component square plus second component square plus third component square. As simply like this. Okay. So you are using our pain. If you want to do vector addition of the thing, just uh, first take the component y side. We have already said it there. But we are doing it in a very compact manner in terms of delta. Similarly, if you multiply the uh, vector vector layer, so you can do the math in this single thing. Okay. Because S is scalar, so it can go inside it because it is, uh, you know, what flow is uh, associated or distributed. Okay. okay. So, scalar product or dot product of two vectors. Okay, you can achieve like this. So, first one can be written like this. And this one, this one, this one, this one. It is nothing but delta 1 v1 plus delta 2 v2 plus delta 2 v2. Okay. And we are doing dot product with w, that is w1 delta 1 plus delta 2 delta 2 plus delta 2 delta 2. Okay. So, now you can see uh, this, this is scalar here. Right. Only these are the vectors. So you can separate this color away here. We can write this together. Now, only we need is delta i cross delta t. So you can write this in complete form. So you can delta i cube. So you know delta i cube. If it is similar, then it will be one. Okay? So you can remove it because all all other i not equal to k will become zero. Vector to the question. So, the reason why so you use a vector, which is vector, delta j plus dk, and the first color we use the end of the video, so we can separate it. We can separate it here, so I'm going to use the value, and it can be replaced by e i j k and delta. Delta, delta I here because we are using this in the right okay. So, you just understand how this thing uh, operates or the meaning of this in the So, once you understand, it's easy to understand the nearest situation in all this operation. So if you have multiple vectors, right? you have a dot product with u of u vector and the cross product of v cross of u. So you can achieve it like this. This comes from this one here. Yeah. And you can now resolve this into again from this one. So you can achieve it like Position vector. Position vector is basically the, the position of uh, you know, object or anything from a window. So you basically say that I set the component. So S1, delta 1, delta 2, delta 1. So, see, this is from identity of the window. If you turn it like this, you just use the W, then the output in terms of dot value is like this. So this is identity, the derivation is like this. Try to remember this identity, it is useful and feature like this. So, but you can derive it like this way. You can go to the derivation. So, you just want to use the to do let's say this one or this connection to it which is the first is equal to 1 that is 1 square then add again but is equal to 2 that will be 2 square and again 
the value that we see, which is uh, the value so 1 plus 4 plus 9, that is 9, 10, 13, so value is 13, and so on. Next, we'll move on to 10 plus. 